you have your Bibles, turn with me to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. I want to talk to you tonight about being a model citizen. Being a model citizen. And I had this thought in mind, uh, what if we all were model citizens? You think of all that goes on uh, in America, and there's so many things, uh, shootings, and you can just go down the list. And the thing that we have to understand, folks, is I believe Satan knows it's getting near the end, and he is rearing his head up, and he is alive and well in the world. It's not just uh, the United States of America. And we have to understand, uh, folks, I've been in five foreign countries, okay? I've seen how they lived and uh, what they do. And, uh, you know, the poor people there, when they get up in the morning, they're not choosing what they're going to eat that day. They are looking for two things, firewood and something to eat. So, folks, we live in the best land, the best country in the world. But if we all would be model citizens, if we would be an example to others, I truly believe that we can make a difference in this world. And let me give you the outline for tonight, being a model citizen. Number one, obey all authorities. There's a lot of folks not obeying authorities, folks. Lots of people. And we as Christians need to obey all authorities. Number two, we need to set a good example. The perfect example of a Christian was Jesus Christ himself. He was perfect, folks, and we need to be like Jesus. I, again, I think it would make a difference in our world. And then number three, we need to honor God in everything. Okay, he's worthy of our worship. He is worthy of our honor, and we need to remember that. You know, we are losing patriotism in the United States of America. And I want to say that a patriot is a person who supports and is devoted to the country in which we live. It breaks my heart to see America divided by people disrespecting our flags, pushing non-biblical beliefs that are destroying the morals and the character of our nation, and a divided Congress full of hate and a lack of respect for God and His holy word. I want to remind you that our founding fathers did not believe in the separation of God from government. They believed that this nation was founded by God, protected by God, preserved by God, blessed and blessed by God. It all depends on God. History tells us that 52 of the 56 men uh, who signed the Declaration of Independence was born again Christians. And folks, uh, nine of those folks died of wounds or hardships during the war. Five were captured and imprisoned. Each case was subject to torture. In, in each case, they were subject to torture. Several lost wives, children, or entire families. One lost his 13 children. Two of the wives were brutally, brutalized by the British. All were at one time a victim of manhunts and driven from their homes. Twelve signers had their homes completely burned to the ground. Seventeen lost everything they owned. Indeed, these, these men not only pledged, but gave their lives, their fortunes, and not one went back on his sacred honor. The nation they sacrificed so much to hell is still intact for us today. And folks, I love it. On our money, our currency, it says, in God we trust. Folks, God is the only hope for America. Jesus is the only hope for America. And we as Christians, we need to pray for our nation. We really do. We need to uh, stand for the principles uh, that this nation was founded on. And we need to abstain the biblical principles uh, in the Word of God. So let's look at being a model citizen. Romans 13, verse 1. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist were appointed by God. Folks, there had to be structure 
in nation. You can go back to the Old Testament times, and there were kings there. And you have to understand, God, you know, put these authorities in positions. And you even think of some of the Bible folks in the Old Testament uh, that was uh, Christians that had faith, but yet they were serving in pagan nations. You take Joseph, and Joseph went through all this. His brother sold him into slavery, and we know the story of how he got uh, in second in command. But yet through all that, he still uh, you know, stood for God and stood for godly principles, and God used him to save a nation, the nation of Israel and also other nations from famine. I think of Daniel and King Nebuchadnezzar, all right? I think of Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. These uh, children of God stood when, when the government was telling them certain things, and, and they stood, and they even placed their life on the line because of the principles that they stood for. So we should not be surprised. It's just like the election, folks. I'm telling you, we need to get out. We need to vote. We need to vote our conscience. But God is in control. He used Pharaoh, if you think about it, in the Old Testament to discipline his own children. And so I'm simply saying, God knows what's going on. God knows already who's going to win the election. And we need, folks, we don't have to be ugly about it, okay? We need to obey all authorities. Now look at verse 2. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. And folks, we should never resist authorities. I thank God for our policemen and our policewomen. I thank God for our folks that are in law enforcement. Could you imagine what our world would be if there were no laws? If martial law, uh, you know, ruled and reigned. Folks, the ones, uh, you know, with the most guns, the ones that were the biggest and the strongest, they would rule. But God places these people in authority to help us, okay, to, to obey the laws of the land. And we need to do that. First Peter 2, hold your finger there and go to 1 Peter 2 with me. 1 Peter 2, verse 13. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Okay, he tells you. Peter says, why? For the Lord's sake. You're a Christian. You need to obey the laws of the land, whether uh, to a king is supreme or governor's as to, do, to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. Why do we have jails? Because people break the law. Why, do pe why are people arrested? Because people break the law. These laws are in place to protect us, folks, to protect us. And it says, uh, or the governors for the punishment and praise for this is the will of God, that by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. The very same words were used in our first scripture that we said. For doing good. Obeying the authorities uh, is a good thing, folks. As free, yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bond servants of God. Folks, we're God's servants. People are watching everything we do. People are listening to everything that we say. And we need to be model citizens. I love these, this next verse. Honor all people. Folks, I am telling you, Jesus respected and honored every human being. And I will disagree with some folks but I do not have to be ugly about it. The word hate should not be in my Christian vocabulary. The word hate should not. Folks, we need to hate sin, not the sinner. That's what Jesus says. 
There's a lot of things I don't agree with. Our government's not making great choices in some of these issues. The Bible clearly says abortion is wrong, folks. It's against the Word of God. Life begins at conception. Homosexuality is wrong. And yes, they can be saved. Yes, they can be forgiven. But it's just like, you know, they are, they are just, they, I keep hearing this word, the new normal. Folks, that's not normal for Christians. Transgenders, it just makes no sense. Folks, God created man and God created woman. And it needs to stay that way. There are so many things I do disagree with. But folks, we still need to tell these people about the love of Jesus. It's just like protesting. Hey, if you want to go out on a corner, you want to hold up a sign, and you want to protest, I don't have a problem with that. But when we start taking law into our own hands, when we start getting violent about things, folks, we've crossed the line. Honor all people. Love the brotherhood. I love this one. Fear God. Folks, there's, just, there's not that reverential fear of God anymore. And we need to fear God and not be afraid of Him. That's not what it's talking about. It's, it's honoring Him. It's respecting Him. It's respecting His house, respecting His Word. And then it says, honor the King. So we as Christians need to obey all authorities. The second thing I want you to see is we need to set a good example. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. See, that's why, that's why sometimes, and, and you do it, and it happens to me too. If I'm driving along there and I'm not paying attention uh, to my speedometer, and I may not even be speeding, and I look behind me, and there's a policeman there, what do I do? I let up off the gas. Almost like I got caught. Well, folks, if I don't speed, I don't have to look in my rearview mirror. Okay, we need to respect authorities. They are looking out for the bad guys. The bad guys. And it says, do you want, uh, do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good. Three times now, already. Folks, do you not see a thread in all that we are saying? We as Christians, we as model citizens need to do good. We need to do the right thing the first time. Then it says, and you will have praise from the same, for he is God's minister to you for good. Folks, I, I know sometimes, uh, you know, we look at law enforcement and we, we see this, you know, strong, we see the badges, we see the guns, and it's almost like we're afraid of them. But I thank God that they patrol my neighborhood. I thank God uh, that they, uh, you know, when there's burglaries and when there's crime, that they follow up on them. And folks, you, under, you have to understand about law officials. They put their life on the line every day. Every day they put that uniform on. I am telling you, people are shooting policemen for no reason whatsoever. We need to respect authorities. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is God's minister and avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Oh, folks, we need to respect our policemen. The Bible describes our police and our law enforcement as God's ministers. And folks, they are out there to protect us. They are out there because they have a job to do. And you know what? If we all would just live by the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Verse 5, therefore you must be subject not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. Folks, we truly have in this world, we have lost our moral conscience. There are things on TV that I just, I, I, you know, I'll watch a ball game and, you know, on commercials, I hate commercials, <laughs> all right? I'm always surfing on commercials and I'll go somewhere and I think, did I just see that? 
And, and folks, I am telling you, uh, Christians need to be the moral conscience of uh, others around us. Okay? We need uh, to live uh, for Christ. We need to be an example uh, for Christ and His church. Colossians chapter 3. Go with me to Colossians 3. Colossians 3 verse 12. Therefore, as the elect of God, folks, God chose you. God saved you. God preserves you. God lets you live another day. As the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on, okay, just as we get dressed, okay, we put our, I love all the red, white, and blue out here. I wish you could see it from up here. It looks beautiful. It really does. We put on clothes, but as Christians, we need to put on these virtues. We need to put them on. Put on tender mercies. Put on kindness. Folks, it costs you nothing to be kind. We need more kindness in this world. It's just like some people are just mad about everything. We need kindness, humility, meekness. And folks, meekness is not weakness. It's power under control. Long-suffering, we need to put on patience, folks. People are going to say things. People are going to insinuate things. People are going to lie on you. People can be mean. Just be patient. Be patient with them. Bearing one another and forgiving one another. Folks, we've all hurt people. And here's what I found out. Hurt people hurt people people okay you don't know what their background is you don't know what their raising was you don't know where they live you don't know what has happened to them and folks we need to be patient and we need to be forgiving folks forgiveness goes a long long ways we need to say i'm sorry we need to tell people we were wrong. We need to say, hey, that, that statement was out of line. Will you forgive me? If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you must do. What does must mean? It's not an option. God says God forgave you, and you need to forgive others. Now look at this. But above all these, Put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Now, I realize the world's love and our world's definition is not the same. Because my Bible says God is love. My Bible says God showed love towards us. My Bible says Jesus loved us so much that he came, he, ele- he left heaven, the abode of God, and came down and became a, a man. He hurt, he hungered, he thirsted. He went through every emotion that we go through. And why did he do it? Because he loves us. He died on a cross for our sins. But praise God, after three days, he rose again. Above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And I realize as long as we are in these mortal bodies, we're not going to be perfect. I understand that. But we should strive for perfection. I bet I've said it a thousand times in 44 years of ministry. Ask yourself this question. What would Jesus do? You know what he'd do? He would love the unlovable. He would go the second mile. He would be patient with everyone. Folks, we are to be the model. We are to be model citizens. We are to be model Christians. And look at this. I love this. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you are called into one body. You know what the world is looking for? They're looking for peace. 
But they're looking in all the wrong places, folks. We've got to look to God. We've got to look to Jesus. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Hey, I'm telling you, I'll tell you how to stop war. Get folks saved. Get them saved. Get people falling in love with Jesus. All right, he is our peace. And in verse 16, folks, this is so important. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Folks, we've got to put the word in our lives. Not just reading the word. Not just conquering scripture. It's taking our time. The biggest mistake people make in reading God's word is being in a hurry. Folks, we need a quiet time. We need a time where we are in the Word and we're understanding the wisdom of God and we're understanding who we are in Jesus Christ and we're understanding what true uh, Christian character is. That's what he says here. Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord to the Lord. Folks, I am telling you, I love Christian music. I love it. I listen to it every day. My radio stations are Christian stations. When I get up early and I'm not ready to get up, I put my headphones on and I listen to Christian music. Why? Because a lot of times they're singing Scripture. Every song that we sing out of the hymn book is scripture based we need that in our lives and i'm not against contemporary music but i'm telling you these hymns are rich in spiritual songs and here it is verse 17 and whatever you do in word or deed do all in the name of the lord jesus giving thanks to god the father through him everything you do you do it with jesus in mind so we need to obey all authorities we need to set a good example and the last thing i want to share is we need to honor god in everything look at verse six back in our text for because of this you also pay taxes for they are god's ministers attending continually to this very thing now, I'm telling you, let's take a poll. If you are here and you love to pay taxes, would you raise your hand? <laughs> there ain't a soul here that likes to do that. But folks, something has to, we have to put money in the government, okay? If, if you're like me, Medicare. I just got on Medicare. <laughs> what a blessing, all right? I mean, when I walk in, they just says, Mr. Franklin. You are 65 years old. Man, I thought, praise God. <laughs> Get paid to be old. Folks, I am telling you, nobody likes to pay taxes. But I am telling you, the Bible tells us, what did Jesus say? Talking to the disciples, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Render unto God what is God's. Folks, you would not have what you have without God. Every good and perfect gift comes from heaven above. And folks, I just thank God that I can pay my taxes. I gripe about gas being $3 a gallon. I thank God that I can walk up and drive up and I can pay for the gas. Folks, we are a blessed people. We need to obey the laws of the land. For they are God's ministers. Verse 7, render therefore unto all that are due, taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs are due, fear to whom fear is due, and honor to him who is honored. Folks, we need to honor God in everything we do. Folks, I am telling you the elections are coming up, and I wish I could just turn my TV off for a while. <laughs> Because it is, I mean, you know, people, and that's the thing about, you know, not just opinion polls, but newspapers, online, people can write anything they want to write. 
and claim their First Amendment right. Folks, we need to vote our moral consciences. We need, we need Christian folks in offices. And I, you know, again, you know, we just, we just need to pray and, and pray that God's will be done in these things. A model verse, and I close with this, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 31. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Whether you eat, whether you drink, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Folks, people are watching you everywhere you go. People are listening to what you say. And we need to be examples of model citizens. Father, thank you for this night. And God, I thank you for our country. God, I love this country. God, I thank you for just the men and women that literally laid down their lives. I think of the generations, that strong generation. But God, they really did. I, I just can't imagine being in war. And even as Orville Biddle told me, he literally saw the ocean turn to blood. And God, I thank you for everyone uh, that has served in war times and in peace times. And God, one thing that we can do is we can be model citizens. God, I know we're not perfect, but God, I pray that we would be examples uh, to others. God, you established these institutions. The first institution was the home, Adam and Eve. Then you uh, instituted government. And God, now, even in biblical times, in the New Testament times, you instituted the church. God, we need to let the church be the church. And so, God, we love you and we thank you and we praise you for this country. We praise you that your word uh, just challenges us as U.S. citizens. And God, I pray, Lord, that we would be quick to help others, be quick to love others, and we would be quick to forgive others. God, help us all to look to you for everything that we have in life. God, we need your wisdom in our lives. So God, thank you for your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.